Hi, I'm Mark Honeybone from Property Ventures and welcome to our weekly podcast where we interview prominent members of the investment community along with other professionals in the New Zealand property market. This is a free service from Property Ventures so that you can keep current and learn from some of the best around New Zealand. To check us out, take a look at propertyventures.co.nz. We hope you enjoy today's podcast. Welcome back to our second part of our chat with uh, multi-millionaire Kevin Green. Uh, last week was certainly uh, a lot of fun and inspirational, and I'm sure everyone will agree with that. Well, you're about to be inspired some more. Uh, you also hear how some of his strategies he's been working with property for a long time. I'm sure you'll enjoy the rest of the interview. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's one of the, the best things of all about uh, the position is, number one, your kids get inspired. Um, and your family. My, my dad, who didn't like property investment in the beginning, is now a full-time property investor. Um, at 77, he's got 29 of his own properties. Um, and he's down the local pub telling all his mates, you know, you, know, you get a couple of credit cards, you use all these techniques, and this is the other <laughs> they think he's gone mad, you know. And uh, it's wonderful to see that. My ex-wife, who didn't like property, she's a, a full-time property investor. Uh, I'm very happy we get on it extremely well. Uh, and my kids, you know, my, my youngest, um, my, sorry, my oldest boy is a middle child. He's 18. He's just bought his first property and rented it out. And he's working full time with us at the moment, you know. So the three, the three of them, I've got a daughter who's the oldest and two sons. They've all got a very entrepreneurial streak because people become their environment and they're in it all day, you know. So mm. I, I'm very proud of what that's done for my family. But the second stage of that is... You know, the best thing of all is when somebody comes up to you and says, as a result of something you said um, or something that you did and we've copied or we've taken on board, this has happened and it's marvellous, you know. Mm. And that's a great feeling when people you don't even know come up to you and say, you know, you are a cog in the wheel of this success that we've got. And I think to leave the planet with a legacy like that it is a pretty damn good thing if we can, if we can help others in some way. Yeah, definitely. I've even experienced that on a smaller scale myself. And one of the first podcasts I actually ever did was just talking with an insurance broker. And I was blown away about four or five weeks later. I had two people within a week come up to me saying how they've saved money with their insurance by this um, particular uh, product that the um, insurance guy presented to them. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a good feeling, that's for sure. And does your father still have the dairy farm? Or has he got rid of it finally? Yeah, well, the dairy farm is rented out, um, so it's um, six months summer grazing, so there's, there's cattle still graze it through the summertime, and then it has uh, sheep tack, uh, so it's winter time here now, obviously, so the sheep are on their grazing, and it has two months rest, so it's very much farmed in a holistic manner, if you like, um, and so the soil is still in good heart. The farm actually makes a similar profit margin when we take... Um, the, the net profit from the farm as it did when I was milking over 400 cows on there, which is quite <laughs> ironic. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, uh, <laughs> my, my dad's pretty happy about all that now, you know, <laughs> and uh, we've actually got a couple of other farms that we own, which are potential development projects as well. So it fits in quite nicely with the, the property business as well. Absolutely, and you don't get pooped on anymore, so that's good. <laughs> no, no, certainly not. I, I, you know, as I say, if there's any dairy farmers listening, I love the lifestyle. Um, it's just I didn't want to be in primary production anymore. I wanted to be the middleman uh, and actually take a service or product and sell it on, and that's why property really resonated with me. Right. So um, I, I, I won't go back to farming personally um, because I've found what you know, makes my tail wag, if you like, and uh, everybody's different, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and just um, we'll just move back into the, the property a little bit again. With uh, speaking of people who are different, there are just with different strategies sort of your views and more for newer people. I guess there there are so many strategies with property, and I know you've dealt in quite a few of them. And, and many listeners have different strategies, and they have them for for good reason. You know, people like me a few years ago started trading because that was my full time job, so I needed to do that for the income. Others have high incomes and they're doing property for different reasons. Um, so, so what are some of the, the key points that you would say for the investors that are starting out or even the ones that have got three or five or six properties and they, they want to make a, a, a difference? You know, can you just sort of maybe have a few different strategies you can think of to, uh, yeah, to help them? And, and, I know, and I know right back to the 
you've actually mentioned it before, um, you don't have to mention this tonight about the, the credit card strategy of actually starting, but I'm yep. thinking more the strategies within, um, within the property world. Yeah, I, I, the most important strategy of all is to buy right, um, to buy under value. And um, what I particularly use with that is a business called Repossession Rescue. Um, so foreclosure or repossession properties, they are a substantial gain into our portfolio as far as we buy those at way, way under value, um, 40 to 60% under value in some cases. And we bring those in um, for two reasons. One, obviously, to uh, rent them out, pick them up and rent them out. And secondly, we'll just flip them straight out. We'll sell them on, sometimes exactly as they are. And I think for our time, we've made more money out of that strategy of setting up um, acquisitions of repossession properties than anything else. And the way that we've done that, if I can briefly explain, if anybody's interested, is um, we run advertising uh, which says the wording, are you facing repossession? We can help you out. Um, and people phone up who are facing repossession or foreclosure from the lenders and banks, and we can stop that, um, get the court hearing set aside in some cases, and actually arrange a settlement sum to clear the debt on the property. That settlement sum is quite often with a bit of a write-down, which means we can get a bit of discount um, on the money's owed to the bank to save them going through the expense of court, etc. Um, and that outcome of that is obviously the property, previous property owner doesn't have any county court judgments against them, so hasn't got a bad credit history going forward. Um, we also look after that owner and keep them housed in some way, usually not in the property that we've acquired because if they can't afford the mortgage or the debt on the property, they can't afford the rent either. Yeah, so yeah. we normally have to downsize them or rehouse them with some income support from government. And um, we also, if the property acquisition is hugely discounted, oftentimes give the previous property owner money in their hand uh, to help them going forward. So there's a big benefit for them there. The lenders love it, obviously, because that property doesn't become a repossessed statistic on the Council of Mortgage Lenders mm. website in UK. Um, so they don't want that bad PR either. Uh, and obviously, as investors ourselves, we gain a property asset, um, which we can do whatever we like with at the end of the day, because we, we own the property, mm. and uh, everybody wins out of it, you know? Mm. So the, the more complicated bit about that strategy is, uh, going back to the owner, if the owner's got debt on the mortgage or the, the loan on the property, they've also got debts elsewhere in our experience. And what we try to do is help them to manage that. So they might have debt on the credit card, debt on the, the store catalogue, you know, from goods they purchased, or it could be money they borrowed elsewhere. Um, so oftentimes we'll, we'll ask for the total amount of debt that they owe and compare that then to the value uh, and debt on the property and make sure there's still a margin there between total debt and actual fair market value of the building or property. Uh, as long as there is a margin, um, we can help them out. Mm. So that does require some licensing and uh, some regulation, but we set up a, a company that does that, which is hugely profitable. And um, I, I strongly suggest that people look at that, even at starting out, because I set that up as a business early on in my career. And, and I've learned that you make money when you buy. If you can buy under value, every other strategy you want to do works, you know. Mm. So that, that is the key focus, is getting those properties under their fair market value. And I've got other businesses outside of property as well, the same philosophy of price. If, if I can buy something and sell it the same day for more money, that's a potential business asset, you know. Yeah. So I'm always judging what the fair market value is by asking the customers or testing the market what they'll pay and what the demand is for that particular service or product. And, and property is just the same, you know? Mm. So I hope that kind of, I went into a bit of detail on just the one, that repossession rescue or foreclosure rescue is a, is a big one, stopping repossession. The other strategies that have been very fruitful uh, for ourselves are the multi-let basis. So on the investment side, when we get a hold of a property for letting out, rather than let it uh, to one family, we split that house up into single let units. And our focus is to let largely to nurses and doctors near training hospitals. And the reason for that is there tends to be less wear and tear than if we do a student let. And also we've got full occupancy in those properties. 
Um, if we compare with student letting, which we've got some, which is not our favourite strategy, students pay 10 months effective rent, really. Um, and the best case is you can charge 11 full months on the scene. There are months empty on rent, you know. Mm. So with the, with the training hospital and with nurses and doctors, you've got 12 months occupancy and you've got a semi-professional there um, who's likely to stay in the property a bit longer and look after it and they do pay well. So we find a building that you split up into room lets um, actually pushes up a higher yield. It certainly works well in Auckland as well mm. uh, to multi-let buildings. So I, 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 I strongly advise people to have a look at that, at their customer base and see whether there is an opportunity to split the building up and, and share let it. It's safer on the front as well, whereby if you're compared to a family let, um, if they leave the building and that's the only rent you've got on the building, then there's no rent coming in. If you've got uh, a multi-let whereby you've got three or four rooms and one person leaves in a three-room building, for instance, you've still got two rooms putting money into the pot. So it's a far more sustainable strategy uh, for us then in the, in the rental side. Yeah, and, the, and there are plenty, and there are a lot of opportunities. You know, sorry, there are a lot of opportunities in New Zealand um, around that, and again, next to hospitals yeah. and what have you. And in fact, I just uh, heard of a place in Christchurch the other day. A, a big major company's going in. I know exactly where it's going now. And there's going to be two two thousand four hundred workers working there, and um, the majority of them will be from around the country or overseas. So, um, so that, that's uh, there's a few opportunities there. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, you know, the first thing I do is speak with the company and speak with uh, the HR side and see what the housing provisions are, you know, mm. and whether there can be a deal struck there because that, that's a super, typically a super opportunity you've got there, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think really, if I can just put in there the third one, it's really important. I'm just trying to think on the back of your question on strategies. The, the other biggest single difference that uh, we found in, which is attributing to our growth, is the setting up of access to finance. Um, so we've become fully regulated and licensed as, in inverted commas, a bank. So that what we can do is pay savers, who would normally save with banks and other saving houses, a, a higher return, a higher investment interest rate on their money. And then we can use that money uh, to actually sell on, if you like, to lend to other people. Right, we've yes. also used that money into our own acquisitions. So customers can invest with us, they can get a fixed return from us, but they get a very much higher rate of return on their money. In essence, what we're doing is cutting out the middleman, which is the bank. Mm. Uh, we're employing or engaging with what the technical term is, peer-to-peer -peer lending, PWR, PWR, peer-to-peer -peer lending, which has just started coming into New Zealand. Um, there's a couple of big companies, uh, when I was recently over that I noticed had set up since my last visit. So one or two are picking up on the, the opportunity there already. Mm. And I'd urge even you know, lower property acquisition investors to, to look at that because that's something at the moment, which in New Zealand is fairly easily to get regulated for uh, and maybe a golden opportunity then going forward mm. uh, as to opening the doors to the access to finance. It's certainly been a huge contribution to our growth. Absolutely, yeah, that's great. And I suppose the other, the other flip side of that is for people who are starting out with uh, not a lot of money and maybe not get lending through the traditional banks, may potentially get lending through through someone like that. Would that be, be yes, a fair, fair call or not? Yeah, that's our number one remit there, Mark. We, we look for borrowers who uh, want to buy buy-to-let property, investment property. And I, I've got a loan assessment team who are ex Barclay banks, chief executives, <laughs> funny enough. Yeah. Uh, and they, they will look at that uh, submission by the borrower, uh, both on two fronts, the borrower's uh, suitability as far as affordability of payment, repayment of the debt. Yeah. Uh, and secondly, then the asset itself, is it a good yield? Is it in a good location? So obviously it's a business we know pretty well is the, the buy to let mm. market, as it's called, a rental market. And, uh, and we're very glad to lend into that internationally. Mm. Great. Well, okay. That, that's um, yeah. That, that's massive. Just another way. There, there is there is ways you can you know get money if you need money. If you've got a, I think the number one thing is if you're out there and you haven't got money. Uh, if you've got the the right deal you're about to do and and you can back it up and do everything to back that up. 
you'll get the money. <laughs> yeah, if you, <laughs> if you, you, want you basically need the knowledge of where to look for the money, and, and yep. that's where I was lacking in the beginning. And uh, once I got properly trained and my eyes opened to those opportunities, then uh, the capital wasn't a limiting factor anymore. Because I, as you know, I started with nothing, and I use every technique under the sun really mm. uh, to get money in on the portfolio. Yeah. Just one thing, just a question I want to ask you. I just picked up on you said, obviously, we all you know you make your money with the property when you buy it, um, yeah. and, to, and to know the fair market value. Do you obviously you don't just invest, invest in one place now, but you've obviously got other people that help in different areas? I mean, people yeah. say you must be your local, know your local market well, and that's where you know you get your right buys, and I totally agree with that. Um, yeah. how, how do you think you can, you can cope with that from out of your area or you just advise people to start off with certainly to, to buy in their own area um, if, if it works if the yields work and the demand is there um, and the profits are there when you sell work as close to home as you can because it's a lot easier to manage especially when you're starting off um, but I agree with you Mark I, even though I delegate responsibility in that area I will personally research an area if I'm going to invest in it, I'm putting my reputation, my money, uh, and my risk at stake. So I never buy a property without seeing it, ever. Um, that's the number one rule I've got. So it is a bit of work for me if I'm going into a new area to find the demographics of that area. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a pretty simple process. Once you've done it a few times, there is a process server to it that I use. Mm. And uh, I can get the answers quickly, you know. There's no point in me investing in an area that's not safe. Uh, for me, so I, I've got to know that, and the best person to find out that bit is me, and that's where the, the front effort goes in. Once I've once I've chosen an area, I stick with it long term. Mm. So we, we don't go splatter buying all over the place. We stick the key areas, you know? yeah, uh, and we know those areas well. Yeah, and that's important. You can go different places, but you, you find the area that works well. You know why it works well, the demographic demographics of it, and and uh, you stick with it and and grow from there with it. Yeah, I mean, it's easier to manage, as you, I'm sure you know, with build teams and with local professionals. Uh, once you've got a local team in place and, and they're working well with you, that's a great asset for you as well as the properties come through the system for them to, to engage with because it's all in the same place or similar area. Mm. Yeah, I've done various on in the South Island and done various projects of sort of six building teams around the North Island over a few years ago that you know we can call on and that's great. But I don't know them personally that as long as they know what you're trying to achieve, you know the demographics of what's going on in that area and you know the whys and, and where's. Um, it, it's a yeah, good situation. As you said, it's a process. It's, it's not hard once yeah. you've, you've done it and got the process going. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it does take a, for me a lot of engagement at the start. It yeah. doesn't matter where you invest. If it's a long way from home, as long as it's the right area with the right people, and that takes a lot of research. Um, one of the ways, interestingly, that we found to be very fruitful on that, on customer demand and setting fair market value and buyer demand, is by advertising property for sale uh, that we haven't actually bought yet. Mm. So it's what I call a goldmine advert. We're testing the market, you know. So we'll run an advert selling property at a certain price of a certain type in an area and see what kind of uh, response we get to that. If we get a good response, we know that's a good area to use that strategy. Uh, the same with rental as well. We'll rent a similar property out even though we haven't bought one yet. Mm. And uh, when the phone rings, we kind of answer uh, on the basis that, yep, yeah, you know, that one's gone. We've got some more coming through. You know, would you like us to keep your details and get back to you and give you first chance on the next one? Yeah, great, great and, we uh, tip. Yeah, I mean, you, it's two things. You're doing your research. You're also building up a buyer and rent a database as well at the same time. So the, the hard work and effort we put in, and lots of things we put in, pays off big time by reducing that risk, you know? Mm, okay. The great thing is you know, that you might get 10 buyers for a particular product, and then all we've got to do is find 10, 10 properties. So that's, Yeah, that's exactly how it is, you know? That's, mm. that's the ideal situation. Mm. Okay, I know you're a busy man, and, and it's the middle, middle of the day over there, so you've got a, a lot to do yet, I guess. But um, uh, I saw your, your photos of um, your trip to New Zealand on your site, so you obviously had a good time over here and saw a few things around Taupo and what have you, and up in Auckland. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of my most favourite places in the world. I've been to New Zealand 17 times since 1999, so I think that in itself uh, says a lot. I'm, I'm back again in March, actually, so uh, you can't keep me away from that. Yeah, well, that's what I was just going to mention, actually, was about you are here in, in March, and I'm going to come and see you, actually. You're running a property and business conference in Christchurch. So I was just going to 
say, um, if you can tell us a bit about what that is, and if some listeners are here, go, hey, I like this um, guy, what he says, and I want to learn a bit more about him in two days rather than 50 minutes or so, um, yeah, tell us about it and how they can how they can book. Yeah, I mean, it, it came off the back of really the Property Investors Federation when I spoke there. There was a huge amount of interest. So what we decided to do as a result of that interest is run a two-day training. Um, it's something I'm pretty adept at around the world. I've done a few of them now. Um, so I'll be coming over in March to New Zealand to run uh, a training which focuses 50% on property strategies and 50% on all of the business because I'm a strong believer in other business besides property because they're complementary. Um, and certainly with a New Ze- Zealand angle on it as well. So I'll be covering how to get the finance, the creative techniques, in particular peer-to-peer. If anybody's thinking of setting up a peer-to-peer business, uh, it's one of my pet loves at the moment. So uh, <laughs> I'll be training a section on that and all of the finance acquisition techniques that we've used uh, in order to help Kiwi investors. The strategy that we've used the property as well, we're going to great depth um, right through some more creative strategies that we've used as well. Um, with the business side, I'll share some business ideas there that have been very fruitful for us. Um, and hopefully all people that attend will go away with at least one or two new ideas, which they'll implement then um, into their both their property portfolio and or their, their business growth or business startup. So I am pretty good at it. I don't mind saying that. Um, the results speak for themselves. So I'd be pleased to come over. We have... We are limiting the places um, on it. We've got 162 people already. Um, that are there. We, we are capping it at 200 uh, on the venue that we've got. It's in Christchurch. Um, if you want any more information on the dates or how to book, uh, probably the, the easiest way to go forward is just pop us an email and um, we'll send all the information through to you. You can have a look and uh, it'll say in that email then how you can book if you, if you wish it. But it will be first come, first serve. Um, the email address, perhaps, Mark, is the best thing to give out. Are, are you happy with that? Yeah, you yeah, get that out. And, and then I, what I'll also do is uh, I'll have a link on our, our page with a podcast with your email address and, and a link to, to book book them. But um, but you can say it again there as well. Ah, uh, Perfect. Well, in that case, if, if um, we'll send you the event flight link, Mark, for you to use um, so people can book through that if they want to book the ticket straight away. Um, the email address as well, if you want any other further backup information, is wealth, uh, W-E-A-L-T-H, wealth at moving.org. Moving uh, is two O's, M-O-O-V-I-N-G, and dot O-R-G. So it's move like the cow. <laughs> it's one of the Can't cows. get away from it, can you? <laughs> <laughs> so wealth at moving.org. Um, but the quickest route actually would be um, if we can send you the link and you put that up with a blog- podcast. Yeah. Um, and people want to have a look at that first, and they could immediately book through that then as well. Yes, so, so, so if people are listening there and they go, actually, what do we actually do? Just go back to the podcast page of our Property Ventures site, and you'll um, see the link there where you can um, book into it. Perfect. And, um, I intend to be over for three weeks. Again, um, we're going to have a good old uh, route around. I haven't uh, looked a lot into South Island, as, well, a fair bit, but not as much as North Island. So my intention is to be around a fair bit as well. So I look forward to catching up with you again, Mark, and uh, possibly quite a few other people as well, and, and sharing ideas and information. No, that, that's great. Okay, I'll just have one last tip, tip for you for the um, for the person that's listening to you and is totally inspired by what you've been saying, and uh, they, they're ready to go, what would you tell them to do? <laughs> Press the bloody button. Do, you do know, it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people who want to be wanting, in my experience, and, um, and they sit on that edge for a long time. If you don't jump in the water, you're not going to learn to swim, you know what I mean? You might, you might learn a bit quickly, uh, but uh, jump off and start because that's what brings the, the success at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And I get a, bit, a little bit frustrated occasionally with the uh, people who just uh, they, they've done all the hard work, they found the, the perfect property for them, and they, they just don't push that go button. So, um, yeah. But, yeah. But, and and it's, un, it's understandable because we're taught that way. We're taught to have fear, not to have our own destiny. We're taught to uh, get a job, aren't we? And uh, so. It, you know, you, we can respect that people think that way, and I was scared myself. It took me years to start. So well, once you do make that decision, you know, do something about it. That would be my advice. To, you know, get going, whatever it takes. Great stuff. Hey, um, I'd like to yeah, thank, uh, obviously, Kevin, for your 
time today talking to our, our podcast and to the uh, listeners. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you again in, in March. Um, and hopefully uh, some of the people here listening will also want to do the same and they'll jump on the podcast part of our site and they'll uh, book in for you. So thanks for your time today. And um, uh, I hope you don't uh, be too disappointed with the Welsh test on Saturday. <laughs> I, I knew you were going to finish on that one. <laughs> Yeah, I look forward to speaking to you about the outcomes, Mark, and, and congratulations on what you're doing with the podcast and spreading a message. Uh, I think you deserve a round of applause uh, for what you're doing and helping people. Thank you. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Well, are you inspired and ready to go? Um, that, that's been a tremendous hour, and I really thank Kevin for his time. He is an extremely busy man uh, with his businesses over in, in Wales and the UK. Just on the point of the, uh, the March course that he's running here in New Zealand if you're interested in going to that just go to the link on our site Property Ventures uh, on the podcast part of the uh, site and there's a link there where you can register for that course in, in, um, in March it's going to be a lot of fun, I'm certainly looking forward to it, uh, half it's on as he said property and half's on business so uh, can you come and join us there and uh, go to the link and have a look in addition to that, Kevin's has given me a ticket, a $400 ticket for this conference in Christchurch. So what I've decided to do is anyone that um, buys one who has listened to this um, by sort of the middle of next month, we will give them my free ticket I've got for someone else they want to bring with them, or we will give you a refund um, on your ticket that you've uh, purchased. So if you go to the link and buy one, uh, make sure you let me know and um, or even Kevin though, and we'll make sure you go in for that draw and I'll let you know just before Christmas on uh, who's won it. So enjoy the rest of the week and uh, we'll be back next week. Thank you very much for listening.